In this video, I will show how to find the historical volatility of an asset, also known as the standard deviation of the periodic daily returns, step by step. If you have not already done so, you may want to watch my last two videos on an overview of the standard deviation and an overview of calculating the standard deviation. You may also want to watch my video on an overview of the periodic daily returns of an asset. Let's download the closing prices of an asset find the periodic daily returns for that asset, and then calculate the variance and standard deviation. I will also show how to let Excel or Google Docs find the standard deviation of the periodic daily returns for you. The first step is to get the daily closing prices for each day. For a stock or ETF, we can download the daily closing prices from Yahoo Finance. On the Yahoo Finance page, type in a stock or ETF ticker symbol and hit enter. For this example, I am entering SLV the silver ETF. After the information for the stock or ETF loads, click on the link titled Historical Prices in the left hand column. When the Historical Prices page loads, select the appropriate dates to cover the range that is needed. Common selections are one year's worth of data or all of the data over the life of the asset. Make sure that the daily time frame on the top of the page is selected. Now click on Get Prices. When the page loads, scroll all the way down to the bottom of the page and click on Download the Spreadsheet. Save the file and open it in Excel or Google Docs. The file opens to show the date, the opening price, the highest price, the lowest price, the closing price, the volume, and the adjusted closing price for each day. Delete all information except for the date and the adjusted closing price for each day. Here is SLV's adjusted closing price for each day. To find the periodic daily return, click on the cell to the right of the first adjusted closing price. Type in equals LN in the open parentheses symbol. Click on the adjusted closing price, enter a slash for divide, click on the previous day's adjusted closing price, Add the close parentheses symbol and hit enter. This gives you the periodic daily return for that day. Now click on the bottom right corner of the cell and drag down. This will cause Excel or Google Docs to calculate out all the periodic daily returns for all of the previous days. After finding the periodic daily returns, at this point we can simply let Excel or Google Docs calculate the variance and standard deviation for us. Let's look at how to do this before calculating the variance and standard deviation by hand. To find the variance, in any empty cell type in equals var.p for population or var.s for a sample of the population, open parentheses, click on the top of the column to select all of the periodic daily returns. Add a close parentheses and then hit enter. This gives us the daily variance. To find the standard deviation, in any empty cell type in equals stdev.p for population or stdev.s for sample of a population, open parentheses, click on the top of the column to select all the periodic daily returns, add a close parentheses and hit enter. This gives us the daily volatility or standard deviation. To scale the variance, multiply by the number of trading days. For the annualized variance, multiply the daily variance by the number of trading days in a year. To scale the volatility, also known as the standard deviation, multiply by the square root of the number of trading days. For the annualized volatility, also known as the annualized standard deviation, multiply the daily standard deviation by the square root of the number of trading days in a year. Now let's finish calculating the variance and standard deviation step by step. Next we find the average of the periodic daily returns. In any empty cell, type in equals average open parentheses, click on the top of the column to select the entire column of periodic daily returns, add a close parentheses and hit enter. Now we subtract the mean from each of the periodic daily returns. In the cell to the right of the first periodic daily return, 
type in equals, then click on the first periodic daily return, add a minus sign, then click on the cell containing the mean. Highlight the mean and press F4. This places dollar signs around the cell location, locking in that cell when we drag down. Now we hit enter. Click on the bottom right corner of the cell and drag down to get the distances from each periodic daily return to the mean. Now we square the results. In the column to the right of the first distance, type in equals, select the first distance, then add a caret 2 to square the cell and press enter. Click on the bottom right corner of the cell and drag down to square all the other answers as well. Next, we add together the squared distances from the mean. In any empty cell, type in equals, sum, open parentheses, click on the top of the column to select the entire column, add a close parentheses, and hit enter to get the total squared distance from the mean. Next, we find the average squared distance from the mean, also known as the variance. For a set of data that is an entire population, we divide the total squared distance from the mean by the total number of periodic data returns that we used. For a set of data that is a sample of the population, we divide the total squared distance from the mean by the total number of periodic daily returns we used, minus 1. In any empty cell, type in equals, click on the total squared distance from the mean, type in a slash for divide, then type in either the total number of periodic daily returns used or the total minus 1. Click enter to get the variance. To get the standard deviation, we take the square root of the variance. In any empty cell, type in equals, sqrt, open parentheses, click on the variance, add a close parentheses, and hit enter for the standard deviation. So that's calculating out the standard deviation of the periodic daily returns of an asset step by step. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.